Cardinal Bevilacqua, Prince of the People, a Channel 10 special presentation continues. Vatican City is the very heart and spiritual focus of the Catholic Church. Her impressive entrance is the Piazza di San Pietro, St. Peter's Square, where tourists flock and the waters flow from ancient fountains. Only 1,000 citizens live in the sovereign state, but it's the focus of 700 million Catholics worldwide. The basic feeling I get from all of these activities and ceremonies is the universal nature of the church. Uh, you just can't help but be thrilled at the fact that you have people from every country in the world here in the native costume, native music at times, and all cheering their own cardinal. It is here that the church celebrates her newest members of the College of Cardinals in a Vatican reception. Rosa Ramirez a sus órdenes. In the country, the Lepeyi? In the Guadalajara, estamos aquí en hospedadas, eh? In Roma. I came from Queens. He came Monsignor from Thomas Flanagan celebrates the elevation of his longtime friend from high school, college, and seminary, Anthony Cardinal Bevilacqua. Tony was the smartest guy in the class from high school right on through uh, seminary and college and always a brilliant uh, student. Absolutely. So you're not at all surprised about this elevation? Not a bit. No. The Vatican reception is designed to give ambassadors to the Vatican and also the cardinals an opportunity to welcome their new cardinal. And as you can see from the people here, diplomats come in all shapes and sizes. Philadelphia's new cardinal has presented a painting of Christ the Good Shepherd. International seminarians celebrate his moment in the history of the church. It's a moment that Cardinal Bevilacqua never dreamed of, but has now realized. It was just a, a sign, a token of uh, that we are with him in this uh, very, uh, very beautiful moment in the church. It's Saturday, June the 29th in Vatican City, the feast of Saints Peter and Paul. And it's on this day that Pope John Paul II will present his new cardinals with their rings. It happens in a ceremony right here in the Piazza di San Pietro, St. Peter's Square. The rings that he'll present the cardinals represent their bond with the chair of St. Peter. The ceremonies in the square in front of the imposing Basilica of St. Peter were the same as would be celebrated in any parish church, although much longer, and more splendid with the colors of the new cardinals and diplomats and pilgrims from around the world. In nomine Patris et Fini et Spiritus Sancti. Like Sunday Mass, the ceremony had three parts, the Liturgy of the Word, three readings and two chants from sacred scripture, a homily or sermon, and general intercessions. Gloria in excelsis Deo. The second part is the Liturgy of the Eucharist. Here, bread and wine are brought to the altar and prepared and prayed over. Per ipsu. Et cum ipso, et in ipso. Then the central part of the Mass is celebrated, the Eucharistic prayer, a prayer of thanksgiving, which incorporates the words of Christ, consecrating the bread and wine into his own body and blood. This prayer ends with the doxology, or prayer of praise, and the great Amen, where the assembly makes the Eucharistic prayer its own. The third rite is the rite of communion, which begins with the Lord's Prayer, includes the breaking of the bread and the distribution of Holy Communion, a closing prayer, blessing, and dismissal. It's during this Liturgy of the Word, after the homily, that the new cardinals receive their rings. Between the proclamation of the Gospel and the general intercession, each new cardinal approached the Pope individually to receive a special ring as a symbol of his new office. The ring is the symbol of the Cardinal's fidelity to and nuptial bond with the Church, his spouse, and of his personal fidelity to the Pope of Rome. The outside of the ring is an engraving of some mystery of the faith or image of Mary or Jesus. The inside of the ring bears the coat of arms of the reigning pontiff, Pope John Paul II. Then came the big moment that the Philadelphia pilgrims were waiting for. Anthony Cardinal Bevilacqua approached the Holy Father and knelt before him to receive his ring. The moment was historic. As the Holy Father presented the ring to Cardinal Bevilacqua, he said, Receive therefore the ring, sign of dignity, of pastoral solicitude, and of firmer communion with the See of Peter. 
Now that he's received his ring, the final symbol of his elevation, Anthony Cardinal Bevilacqua takes part in the rest of this Mass, celebrated by Pope John Paul II. It's a tribute to the union of Christians everywhere. America has a total of 10 cardinals now, and Philadelphia has two of them. That means we have 20% of all the cardinals in the U.S. We have sort of cornered the market, it seems. This speaks very highly of the great esteem the Holy Father has for the Church of Philadelphia. We may not be considered a world-class city by the international business community, but we certainly seem to merit that status in the Church. The Lamb of God is chanted during the breaking of the bread, which was the original biblical name for what the West calls the Mass and the East calls the Divine Liturgy. The symbolism of all sharing from one loaf is a powerful one. All people, no matter how important or lowly, are fed and sustained by the one Lord. The imagery is especially evident at this celebration, with cardinals and diplomats and simple pilgrims all approaching to receive Holy Communion. Dominus After the closing prayer, the Holy Father blessed the new cardinals and pilgrims alike with words that really summarized why this prince of the people, Anthony Cardinal Bevilacqua, was elevated to the College of Cardinals on this feast of the Saints Peter and Paul. The Lord has set you firm within his church, which he built upon the rock of Peter's faith. May he bless you with the faith that never falters. The Lord has given you knowledge of the faith through the labors and preaching of St. Paul. May his example inspire you to lead others to Christ by the manner of your life. And may the keys of Peter and the words of Paul, their undying witness and their prayers, lead you to the joy of that eternal home which Peter gained by the cross and Paul by the sword. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Et Spiritus Sancti, descendat super vos et maneat semper. With the conclusion of the Papal Mass, the elevation ceremonies are now complete, and the pilgrims who came here to experience it take a moment to reflect. Joe, what have your impressions been of the Papal Mass? Uh, profoundly moving. Uh, there's pageantry, but uh, the spiritual part is really the most moving, so it's uh, just one of those unique experiences in a lifetime. It's unbelievable. It's uh, just inspiring to know that the uh, descendant of St. Peter we just watched celebrate Mass. It's, it's incredible in our lifetime to see the Pope celebrate Mass and Park Cardinal Bevilacqua and all the Cardinals. It's just unbelievable. It's just never forget it. It's, it's just all inspiring. It is a unique experience that I don't think in our lifetime would ever be um, repeated again. Thanks to Cardinal Bevilacqua? Yes, because he really has that warmth, that uh, personality that makes you feel that you are truly a part of his parish, not just an individual in Philadelphia, but truly his friend. In just a moment, some final thoughts on the happenings here in Vatican City. Stay with us. Cardinal Bevilacqua, Prince of the People, a Channel 10 special presentation, will continue.